Hi, I'm Miss Sloan and I'm making this video for my sporty kids that are going to miss my class tomorrow. Uh, many of you are doing the diffusion and osmosis lab, maybe in your class as well. Um, part one of the lab has to do with um, using a uh, dialysis tubing and you fill it with starch and glucose and outside has water and iodine. And you're using that as a model to demonstrate the semi-permeability of a cell membrane. Some molecules can move through and some molecules cannot. And we have evidence to collect on that as we did in class. Um, part two of the lab, you use dialysis tubing again, but this time you put in various molarities of sucrose solution inside the tubing, and then they all sit in distilled water. Water is always going to flow from a higher water potential to a lower water potential. The best water potential you can be is zero, and distilled water has that. Every time we put osmotically active substances like sugar inside with the water, it lowers the water potential. So the trend, if you probably saw this in your data, is as we increase the molarity of the sucrose solution inside the dialysis tubing, you had a greater percent change in mass as the, as the water moved from a higher water potential in the beaker to lower in the dialysis tubing. But really what my video is about is part three. Part three, you cored potatoes and you put these potatoes in various molarities, same as before, and you look to see did they gain or did they lose weight when you let them sit for uh, overnight within that molarity. And what we're trying to figure out using the data is what is that sweet spot of molarity where the potatoes would neither gain nor lose weight. Because if we find that molarity, we can calculate the water potential of the potato cores. And so if you look here, this is a reminder. This is the equation formula that you see for all AP students who have access to that. And water potential is a factor of pressure potential and solute potential. Pressure potential is caused by the cell wall and generally it's a positive force. And solute potential is created by the osmotically active substances that are dissolved into the water. And every time you add something in, it goes negative. This is a sample equation where you can see if we can find that sweet spot of molarity where the pressure is zero, that the wall is not pushing back to keep the water from moving in, we can remove pressure from the equation and just have water potential be a factor of the solute potential alone. The solute potential, there is an equation to calculate that, and that is negative ICRT. Negative because whenever you put solutes into a solution, then the water potential is gonna go down. I stands for the ionization constant. For sugar, it is one, because it doesn't ionize. Salt would be two. And then this is that sweet molarity right here where your potatoes would neither gain nor lose mass. This is just an example, okay? This is usually given as a molar concentration, which means moles per liter. And then this is a constant, 0.0831 liters per bar per mole per Kelvin. And we can use that so that when we go through and cancel everything out, we are in bars. The last bit is um, temperature, and temperature is in Kelvin, and so it is whatever the temperature is in Celsius plus 273 degrees gives you the Kelvin. So when we do this, we can you know cancel them out, and you're left then with bars. So in this example, the solute potential is negative 5.7 bars, but since we got rid of the pressure because the wall was not pushing back, we know that the water potential equals the solute potential. So how we did this in our lab is we put those chunks of potatoes in various molarities of solution, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, all the way up to one molar. And all of you collected your data and we put that in a course share document. And what we noticed is some of the potatoes gained weight and some of the potatoes lost weight. And we saw this happening over increasing molarity. So when you set up your graph, you're going to need a zero line right here. Above this is where you have gained mass 
and below it is where you have lost mass. And so this will be our percent change in mass on our y-axis, and then on our x-axis will be increasing molarity. And what we're looking for is when we plot this out, and we do our best made line through our, our data, where does it cross zero? And where it crosses zero is where the pressure potential would be zero. And once we have that, our water potential is only a factor of our solute potential. We are looking for this predicted molarity where we can solve. Now, if you look here, this is just some sample data. So you can see at zero, it was at 20%, and then it started losing weight at 0.4, and it dropped down to negative 10, 0.6, 0.8, and one molar was about the same. And that's pretty typical because at some point, the potato cannot lose any more water, so you're not gonna see a statistically different percent change in mass. So once you have plotted those points on your graph, Okay, you make your best made line through those points. I've kind of pretty much ruled these last two out. And then I draw a straight line down to my molarity and it looks like about 0.32 molar is where I would predict it would not gain or lose any weight based on the data that we collected. So at that point, my um, pressure potential is zero. So my water potential is just a factor of my solute potential. So now I can solve for it. Negative ICRT and this 0.32 is the C. That's the moles per liter. So this is showing you a demo right here. I could use with that data, I could put, I could put in here 0.32 moles per liter. That's my C that comes from my graph. Okay, this is a constant, sugar is one. And then the temperature here was because at the time of that experiment, it was done at 22 degrees. So I have to do 273 plus 22 is 295 degrees. And then I can just calculate um, it out from there. And, but for our lab that we did most recently, and this would be in 2025, um, our temperature was 5.4 degrees Celsius because we had it in the refrigerator. Okay, so let me just show you a couple more things. All right, from, you can look at our core shear data from all six sections and all the periods. I took out the outliers and these are the means of the different molarities. So it goes from plus 36.7 all the way down to minus 34.5. So if I was setting up my graph, percent change in mass, okay, I would have it go up to 40% and I'd have it go down to negative 40%. Then I have my molarities on here on my x-axis, 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one. And literally you just need to then graph. So at zero molarity, I'm at 36.7. So I'm gonna say it's about here. Okay, and then at 0.2, I'm at 10.1, so I'm gonna say here. And you can see you go through and plot all your points, make your best made line, drop it down, and see what molarity would pressure potential be zero. All right, so as you set that up, for my students in your lab notebook, then underneath you need to do your calculations and show me that when you do your claim evidence reason. All right, I hope that was helpful.